I've travelled to Corby today and this is the heartland of the food industry in the UK. I'm at Rockingham Manufacturing. They recently bought two brand new machine tools from Romy, a big CNC lathe as well as a machining centre. We're going to be looking at some of the parts they make here. They do a, real, a really nice blend of stainless steel, plastics as we see here and all the turning and milling is done essentially on their Romy machines. Let's meet with Richard and find out more. Two minds is always better than one. I know, I know you're, a, you're, you're, you're both well-skilled engineers, and that's probably one of the reasons, you look at me funny there, Richard, that's probably one of the reasons why you bought this Romy. We'll start on that point. This is the machining centre. When did you buy it, Richard, and why did you buy it? We bought it about three months ago. Where I was impressed with the build quality of the machine. That's important to us. It's, it's got to last. It's got to maintain its accuracy over a longer period. Why is that important to you? I know it might be a bit of a crazy question, but are you tackling sort of difficult componentry? Well, we do a lot of work in stainless for the food industry, and our customers are demanding that. Okay, okay, that's a good point. Alan, you, you're behind the, you use this machine. Think, this yeah. is a, a good example of what you're making. Tell me more about this part. I, okay, this part's used for the food industry, it's, um, and it's used for making a uh, for bread parts. And you machine all this from start to finish on here, all the, all the, the milling and the, uh, the drilling? That's right, yes, yes. It's um, very good for U-drilling. We use a 43 mil U-drill um, and we clap it all in one go, we don't pack it. You go through that in one hit and that's stainless? That's uh, stainless. It's, the machine seems to have the power to coat, you know, to coat with it. Um, and once you've done the, the U-drilling, do you then do some fine boring to finish it? Yeah, the boards are quite important tolerance wise, so there's a tolerance of it 0.01 to 0.03 and we bore it and it just holds size and gives a good finish in the boards as well. This isn't the only machine you bought is it because I know you bought a lathe as well but you bought the two machines that got different controls was was that a problem to you Richard? No not really the milling machine's got a fan up control um, we're all very familiar with fan up a lot of the other mills we have here are fan up as well. You've got a really good mix of machines in the machine shop as well. Bringing in a, bringing in a new company like Romy, how, how's the experience been so far? It's been good, yeah. No, I've enjoyed working with them. That's Paul Reeves, I'm assuming. Yes. <laughs> so machine number two, this is a C680 flatbed lathe. Are the reasons that you bought this one in the package similar to the machining centre, build quality and so forth? Yeah, the build quality, as I said before, is important to it. This is a very rigid lathe, and that's what impressed us about it. Size is uh, always important, obviously. What you got on this when it comes to turning length and diameter? It swings 680, so it's a good size, and it's got a two metre bed. Now, I opened up the video talking about these, this uh, kind of drum part that we see on here. Are you doing all the turning for this then on this machine? Yeah, we do all of the turning on here. It's in several operations, but it's all done on here, in the chuck on jaws, and then we have a steady for the other end. And what, what's kind of like the cycle time for something like this to do all the turning? Because it's got to come off here and then, and then you've got to do the milling as well, haven't you? Well, the cycle time does vary because the drum sizes can vary. They're anywhere from an hour to, depending on the sizes, two hours. And, and this being a plastic part, do you also do a lot more than just the plastic here on this machine? Oh yes, you know, we do a lot of large parts on there. Again, in steel, stainless, cast iron. I get the feeling from talking to you, Richard, there is a, there's a lot of diversity in what you're manufacturing here. There's an incredible diversity to what we manufacture. Besides the food industry, the automotive, um, motorsport, so on this you could be doing castings, whatever, very, whatever very, comes. Very, very much so. And, and was that a reason as well that you went for the Siemens control? Because I see here you've got the, the uh, shop turn. Is it because this is easy to program as well? This handles one-offs? It, it does. It makes it very, very easy to handle for one-offs, as you say. Because we tend to do lowish volumes. I mean, you can run it as in normal uh, G-code mode as well. But the shop, the, the shop turn does make it easy to simulate. So we've got a simulation now. I think when you press a simulation, it just shows you what you're actually going to be turning. Yeah, it's, it's turning. Uh, uh. 
and you've got a 3D view as well. But really, when it comes to ease of use, this, this control suits, although like we spoke about earlier, you've got Fanuc on the machining centre and Siemens on here, but that doesn't matter to you, does it? No, it doesn't matter to us, no. And as a company, as you grow then, can you see a lot more roaming machines being in here? You've got a lot of, as I've said already, diverse machines. Are they going to be replaced with what, this sort of technology? Yes, well, we are actually thinking about getting another roaming. Good stuff. Right, well, thanks for your time today, Richard, and uh, good luck for the future. Thank you.